Hello everyone, welcome to Boreham Woods. This is Shenley Road in Boreham Woods. I'm going to take you around some filming locations, heading up with a, a location that was used and uh, that we found a few weeks ago thanks to Mark Goonies. We had tracked it down. So uh, I'll take you on a walk of the some of the locations you see in the film. I hope you've all seen this the correct way around. I tried doing this last year. And unfortunately, I was videoing myself walking, and you didn't get a full view of this street. Now, this street that we're seeing here is White House Avenue. Uh, you might be able to see it here now. I just crossed the road here. And this road here is where I turn around Betty's house is. It is White House Avenue. Okay. So if we watch up, walk up here, this is White House Avenue and I'll take you to which was Turn Around Betty's house. I hope I survived this video because it is, I don't know what the temperatures are, they must be touching on 90. Uh, but just take a walk up here. So the bus would have uh, come up in this direction as they were walking from the high street. Now when I get to Betty's house... I'll stop and I'll explain some more. So, hopefully you're all going to enjoy this. This is for people who really love the locations. Obviously, it gives you a chance to see them without actually getting here for yourself, I think. So, I'll leave the last one. The last one that we will probably cover is one that has been that was recently uncovered. I will do another one that was recently uncovered as well because it is on my walking route that I've got planned. Okay, so hope you stick with me or new people join in along the way and it should be very informative. Now, if you remember the film, if you, well you will know the film anyway obviously, being on the buses fans. So, turn around Betty's house. is across at number 20 across the road there that's turn around betty's house in the film it was a lot different obviously because uh there was a wall along the front it's now been opened up to open parking so number 20 that's just across the way there now if you have a look the washing pole line is still there you can see if you look i don't want to zoom in because it might mess my video up uh, that was where the washing line was with the panties up. You can see a little pole there. You notice a distinctive single story house like bungalow next to it as well, which is the giveaway. Now the bus would have been parked around about here. Now we can see the part, you remember the part from the film as well when Jack punches his ticket machine uh, before he gets off and goes across the Betty's. That would be in the around about here. You can still see the circular area, which is a big giveaway as well, that is still there. You've got a circular area there. And uh, you can see it for yourself, the circular area. Now, if you look back down to the high street, that is a scene when you see the bus coming. You can see that's not changed at all. The high street shops in the background. The bus comes in this direction towards us and parks roughly right about here. And now there was, as you know, a uh, uh, bus shelter here. Well, that was only a mock bus shelter. You can tell the way that it easily crumpled when the bus backed into it. Uh, so... That is turn around Betty's house, as I said. Uh, I'm going to head back up onto the main street now, okay? You can tell as well that they did actually get a shot from the upstairs bedroom window at Betty's house. Because if you look across the road and see the pointed, the very um, pointed top, you do actually see that when the when, um, camera looks out and sees the bus pulling up with Blakey on it. But the bedroom scenes, I can guarantee, were all filmed at L Street Studios because there is another shot when you see uh, they're on the bed and they, I think the camera pans across to the view you get out of the window and the houses opposite are totally different from that one with the pointed um, roof that we just saw back there. So that's how I know for a fact that was definitely the bedroom shots were filmed in, uh, in the studios. Any internal shots uh, of houses and such like and uh, nearly all films are always uh, studio shot in any case so um, I can guarantee that to be the case the, the reason for that is 
these films were made on really cheap budgets. They do not spend uh, uh, money when they uh, throw money away that they would have needed to pay to use that house for filming when they could have done the same scene in the studios for nothing. So that's how they always use studio shots and such like on the buses films, carry on films were exactly the same as well. It's very, very rare unless they have to, they actually hire out some place to film at. So we're going back on to the main street now of Borehamwood. And you do see this street uh, regularly with the bus coming down in the opening and closing credits. I'll just stop when I get to the out onto the main road and I'll pan the camera around so that you get the basic uh, feeling of uh, the locations of what it looked like, if you see what I mean. Now you do see when the bus pulls in, I think it's the opening credits of the first film, it comes down the main street and you do see it pulling into White House, that avenue. And the giveaway for that is that if I stop here and look up to the corner of White House Avenue, you see that little triangular white design, you see that as the bus turns into the street. And now the, there is the view, the bus comes down the street here, I can't really go out into the middle of the road because it's a little bit on the dangerous side. I will try after this. So. There we go, that's the main road where the bus would have come down. A central reservation has gone in here now and uh, on the high street as well. So I'll turn around and we'll head on down in the direction we're heading towards the LC Studios now. So I hope you're all enjoying this. Yeah, that's right George, it has indeed. I thought that when I just walked up there just now. It has changed. I don't know whether it's got a new owner in there, but it certainly seems like they've had a new door fitted at Turn Around Betty's house, which was 20 White House Avenue if you're ever down in Borehamwood and you wish to uh, visit it. This is rich in areas. Like if you look at the Barclays Bank over there, I do believe that features in our um, episode of The Champions. Uh, a lot of Randland Hopcock scenes were um, filmed down here and The Saint. The uh, confessions of uh, the, all the confessions films. Now, if I stop here, the pub that I'll cross back will just go past to give you a better idea. There's a pub past here that is called the Heart and Spool now. And up above it, there's a, a LCN, which is like a motel, which is this building here behind the trees, if I move up further. Now, in the old days, when they were making the On The Buses films, it wasn't the Heart and Spool, it was all the Grosvenor Hotel. So if I go back here now, if you think back to the scene when Olive and um, comes out of the hospital, St Luke's Maternity, with the child, would have roughly been, felt the building for that was the old admin blocks, it was the studios, would have been around about where all of these trees and bushes are, would have been about here. And we know that because you see the white-ended building, which through the trees you can see now, was the Grosvenor Hotel when you see that the white building there that was would have been the Grosvenor Hotel now the L Street Inn so the bus parks up comes up and parks here and obviously the bus is parked here sorry and Olive would have come out of the hospital St Luke's maternity would have been here which has all been cleared now and it's part of the very front end of the Tesco car park but of course all this area here was all part of the um, the the old part of the Tesco's uh, the sorry the Elstree Studios, which were demolished in the late uh, 1980s and made way for this the um, the Tesco's. Now I wasn't going to go in here, but I think I will because there's some points of interest in here and the Tesco's car park. So I hope you're all enjoying this and can stick with me, I'll be posted up, um, uh, you'll be able to view it as well at your leisure. So, this area here which you can see is a vast Tesco's Extra and it gives you a full idea then of what the, um, of what the full scale of the old Elstree Studios used to be where this massive car park is and the Tesco's extra up the top there 
that was all, this used to be all part of the old Elsley Studios, now demolished of course. So just going to cross here. Now here there was a lot of admin blocks, white, builded, white buildings. Uh, one of them they used as the front of the hospital when the sidecar, when the bus pulls up and uh, they've got Olive stuck in the sidecar. Olive stuck in the sidecar and... And they run, and Arthur runs out, we're going to get the, the, the uh, stretch attendant comes out and he says, I'll get, a, uh, I'll get them to prepare the delivery room. And Arthur goes in and pulls out a trolley and says, no, quick, get a hammer and chisel. So this would have been filmed around about here. The old damn blocks that were would have been around about here in two strong stretches. Now where the Tesco stands now, the Tesco obviously was the old sound stage that doubled as the bus depot. Which is funny because you do recall a scene from one of the films, I think the actress's name was Hilda Barry. She said, I've been two hours on this bus and I only wanted to go to Tesco's. Well, now, of course, it's the Tesco's on that site. Now, one that um, took a lot of hunting around and finding, and it was actually my sister Caroline that helped me with this location because she suggested it, is because we looked around um, Testatin for this location and couldn't find it at all. And it's the location where Blakey gets towed by a donkey, by, along by the donkey when he's sitting in his deck chair. That was not filmed at Pestatin, although you would believe it by watching it. That would have been filmed roughly around about this area here. Because if you look up through the trees ahead above this car that's just in front of me, you can see a building with a, a house with a pointed top. That is the kind of houses that run along one side opposite White House Avenue, opposite turn around Betty's house. It's White House Avenue on the other side of the hedge there. And that is the houses that you actually see in the background. They're very distinctive with pointed roofs like that when Blakey gets towed by the donkey. So where, they, where Blakey probably would have been, as far as I can ascertain, as near as I can get to it at the moment, obviously it's hectic doing this all in the winter, Perhaps would have been about here, I'd say. It's very, the undergrowth's grown up a lot, the trees have as well. But in the old days, there was grassy banks here, if you look at the overhead shots, like it was in the scene. And the houses match up if you look up on Google Street View and get an overhead shot that's around about this location here, opposite a zone to uh, parking for the, uh, for the trolleys. So that would have been where the donkey pulls Blakey. Again, illusion there, you, you are made to think it's Prestatin, it's got to be, but I have walked all around Prestatin. Um, at Prestatin, and uh, it certainly is not Prestatin at the holiday camp. So we'll head back now. Now, there's another one that is still a very grey area from holiday on the buses. I'll just take you across this way because it's quite nice that they've actually added a little nod to the fact that studios used to be here, which is... I'll just wait until the traffic passes. If you have a look, they've got like a weather uh, vein up on the, para on the parasol sort of areas leading into the Tesco's which has got a, uh, a little bit of a nice nod to the fact that studios used to be here, which I'll just show you in a minute. Which you can see a man holding a camera on the weather vane. Now if we look across to all your buildings that you've got there, you've got the stages that are still there now at the Elstiazes today all along uh, behind the fence there. That is the Elstree Studios that still stand. Now, we did a, 
if you're a regular on the Then and Now group page, you'll know that we've recently done uh, uh, a whole section of ones that we couldn't, uh, locations that I couldn't find, and then put them up and added my own ideas where I think they would be. We've managed to uncover quite a fair few, maybe around 15, 20. There's one that's still a grey area, which I'm not sure if it is or isn't. If you remember the scenes from Holiday on the Buses again, and Holiday on the Buses you've got, um, you have uh, Stan and Jack, they twice go into what is a good store, it's listed as, at uh, the Holiday Camp, where they get the toilet and they also get the paint from. Now, I initially thought, and I'm sure again it was at Prestaton somewhere, and I thought I knew where it was, but I have a sneaky suspicion that that would have been filmed and the same located would have been filmed here. If we have a look at this building in front of me, this uh, location here, this building here, which is part of the studios, obviously it's uh, sound stages. If you look at the brickwork here, I would say it's very close to the, the brickwork that's on the side of the, um, the goods store. And if you have a look across the road here, if I can go across, I'll try and get it, but it's quite busy with buses turning here just now. I'll just cross over the road. Now, if we have a look here, you can see what looks like a door roughly about the same size of what would have been the family goods store. If I raise my camera up, I'll try and get it which you can see it just down there, which used to be a door that's been filled in with white brickwork. I think that might have been the door into the goods store, but we'd need to have a look back and scrutinise it, because the brickwork all totally adds up as is in the film, and it would have really made sense to do it all there. So I'd need to come back down again and have a look again on the video just to make absolutely sure. Uh, I've got my big Canon camera here, which I'll be using to film, to photograph the new location that I'll take you to so that I can use that if I do end up going ahead with my plan to do a second edition of the filming locations book, which will need, obviously, pure quality photographs for it to make it into the book. They need to be taken on proper digital cameras. I don't think mo mobile cameras just don't cut the mustard, unfortunately. Now... We're heading out of the Tesco car park and onto the Elstree Studios is just to in the direction that I'm walking now that is still in existence. Now this is another location that has been that I have unearthed in recent weeks. So this location here I'm going to need to go out onto the central reservation, I think, to give you a better perspective. And one, and if you try and dig around on, on Google, you will find an old overhead view of the studios as they used to be. Now, at one time, up where you see the flag, down in front of there, there used to be a house here, which was the studio manager's um, uh, house. It was the studio manager's house. Now that would have been around about, as I say, on the other side of this hedge and blue fence. And that, at the rear of that, would have been where they filmed the scene when Arthur and Stan go out to look at the state of the motorbike. I know that now because if you have a look at the uh, building there, I don't know if we can see it, I might need to go back this way to show you, get a better view. You'll see this building here, if you can see it just through past the tree. There is a building there that's got distinctive white painted broad uh, bands above the windows. And now you do see that in the background of uh, the scene when Stan and uh, uh, Arthur are in the backyard. And uh, over the back of Arthur, we'd have been looking in this direction and you see some white brickworked building. If you watch that scene again, you'll understand it better. They were the old admin blocks that I was talking of that used to be on LCD Studios that were knocked down in the late 1980s. So obviously you won't see them there now. They were demolished in the late 1980s. So that tallies as well. And if I walk around to explain the other part of it, if you look over the top of stands, where Stan's standing in the background, you see a distinctive building 
uh, which I'll show you in a minute, which I'll walk further up, you can only really see it. It's a distinctive tops of one of the, the parts of the LC Studios that is still there. And it's got little grooves about 15 feet between the gaps of brickwork. You've got little grooves that lead up to a flat roof. Now I'll show you where that is when I get a better chance once I've walked round here. This is the front of LC Studios now we're getting to. need to be careful here because they are very camera sensitive at the at the studio parts obviously for obvious reasons so if you see the building there above where it says LC Studios in the background you'll see the little grooves in the tops of the building you can just see them up above the cream building and further behind that you've got brown brickwork building that's got gaps in between them they you see in the background of Stan if you watch that scene again so that's how I know where that was filmed at that location now, if you look across the road to this brown building, there used to be a cinema on here, across the road here from the studios, that I think it was uh, Studio 24 or something, I think it was called, and that was demolished. You do see that in, the, uh, in one of the films as well. If I walk back down in this direction, there's a scene when... Um, I have missed another location, but I think I'll just crack on anyway. I'll maybe uh, come back to that. It is in my book anyway, the, that location that I'm thinking of. So I'll just give that one a miss and I'll crack on to some more interesting stuff, I, I would call it. So I hope you're all enjoying this. And you can just see how rich our, uh, our area this is and on the buses locations. But look right down in the direction down there to the houses that you see right at the bottom there that is Brook Road down there now the houses that are right at the very bottom that you see that is the front of the houses where the buses are parked at the start of mutiny on the buses when the camera pans in on them you see the two buses parked and Stan is snogging upstairs on the bus uh, that was filmed down there but the camera would have been perched on a block of flats not the new blocks there there's another block of flats that's called uh, I think it's part of the Elsley Studios actually, Neptune House, the cameras I can work out from would have been perched to get that sort of angle. Now, so if we carry on walking down along in this direction here, I'll just add in, throw in something else for you for interest. Now, of course, I did have a great night on Friday night before I'd done my event that was down here uh, yesterday. On Friday night, I had a great night celebrating in the Elsley Studios with Paul Welsh MBE. Happy birthday, mate. It was a great night. Really loved it. And I did actually find a location when I was in there as well. But I'll tell you about that at a later date. Watch the space on the filming location site for that. It's a real golden gem. It is. It's a location that I looked for for ages and ages and couldn't find it little nod of thanks to Ben who was at the party who used to work in the studios took me there allowed me a chance to photograph it uh, so carrying on walking along here this is LC Way now now further up in this direction is where the old uh, MGM studios used to be well, sadly they got knocked down in 1970 uh, three, they started the demolition, but they closed as a film studio in 1970, late 1970. The reason they closed was around that time the British government were talking about putting high taxes, super taxes on to make films in the UK. And that just totally, I think, as I understand it, uh, scared the hell out of MGM. They didn't fancy paying for such a high rate where they could get it films made cheaper than various other studios so the MGM studio was shut down uh, here, they closed it and it was demolished in 1973 and that, one of the sound stages on that site is where you see Stan knocking down the old dust bus depot at the end of holiday on the buses now if there's any aficionados here 
And he liked the lads' films, fans. You may remember a scene from the Likely Lads film when you see uh, uh, them in the library. And the library is across the road there, what was the library. Just through the trees there you'll see it. Sorry, that's not it. There is the what was the library there across the road from the Likely Lads film. Sadly, it's now closed for business and it's a waiting demolition. So that won't be there very much longer at all, sadly. Uh, that is where um, uh, he gets a uh, book dropped on his foot in the, across the road there, in the Likely Lads film, which he filmed a few shots of that around here, uh, the Likely Lads film as well. So if we head out along Elstree Way, this is heading away from the town centre of uh, Boreham Wood. The next location, well the next road that I'll turn into from here was used very heavily in the on the buses films in various various scenes. Probably the most uh, perhaps the most used um, street, I would guess, because you see it and they use it in about uh, maybe as many as eight to ten different uh, occasions in the uh, on the buses films, be it the first or the second. Because the third film, obviously, they filmed majorly, uh, primarily in um, in Preston. Now across the way here, there did used to be at one point, that's a venue, swimming and uh, fitness centre, health club sort of thing. And then we've got um, a block of flats. There did used to be an old uh, uh, Oakwood College there. That stood there when the filming was on. So... That's changed now as well, so luckily I managed to visit it and that was a giveaway then for me when I visited it. But now if I was trying to hunt locations, it probably would I'd probably be a little bit more stumped because it's changed so much at the bottom of this road. The road I'm about to turn into now has had heavy building done on the lower part of it as well. Next road I'm about to turn into... is uh, Bullhead Road. Now these houses that are on the other side of the road here are all new. All of these here would not have, um, definitely, they've only sprung up in the last couple of years. We've been doing on the buses events here for years and take it from me, a year or two ago these, these new build flats would not have been there. Oh, a little bit of shade now, that's quite good. Now, this is Bullhead Road. Of course, some of you might very well know, I'm sure a lot of you will, who have been on the locations tours that we've done down here. This is a scene, of course, the most famous scene is when Olive gets stuck in the manhole cover, when the, mini, when the motorbike sidecar runs away without the handlebars. Now, I can't really go out and show you, I'll try and show you from the roadside where the actual manhole cover is, because obviously there's traffic going up and down this road. But I'll try and get to it as close as possible as I can. You can see the giveaway if you look, the slope in the road as well, you can see obviously that's still there as well. Now the first part of it, I'll show you because I'm coming to that now, is after Olive is stuck in the manhole cover, obviously the sidecar runs on and it runs into a telegraph pole or just past the telegraph pole and that was around here. I know that for a fact because if you look at this garden wall and look at the distinctive grooves, exactly the same in the film, 
that's when Arthur's got the other workmen above him on the under the tent and he says get him off me and that would have been around about here there's a giveaway as that wall there in the background very distinctive now the manhole cover we know from these flat the single story buildings there's only one or two of them on the road here so the manhole cover would have been take the risk that would have been the manhole cover here so you can imagine all of stuck down the manhole cover so it's a car coming I'll get back onto the road but there you can see the slope of the road so I'm going to head on up the slope now because this has taken us to this new location that was only discovered thanks to Mark Goonies our uh, I posted on the on the buses now and then who managed to on the earth this one it had eluded me and puzzled me but they filmed in, on this road here Bullhead Road uh, so many times a lot of the times it was a motorbike in the opening credits they filmed about if you watch the scene when the motorbike is actually getting towed they filmed it coming up Bullhead Road going down Bullhead Road it's sort of like mix and match of the locations um, on Bullhead Road and they just tied it all together and you wouldn't have really known that was all done on the same road basically now the location that we're going to now is the location uh, where they're actually towing the motorbike as well so they would probably would have just went out in the day and filmed everything all in this close location So, we're almost there now onto the road that we're looking for. Bit of shade, which is good. The Yodel delivery van, which isn't good. So we're coming along to the road now of this location. But I think I'll wrap it up at the end of it once I've explained it all because I've got to photograph it. Hopefully I'll get some photographs that are good enough for my book to use in their book if I do a second edition with the new locations in it. Almost there now. Another location that we're coming up to which is on the way there. <coughs> stop under a tree here there's a bit of shade you'll see a roundabout up ahead that is a roundabout that actually when they are towing the sidecar the bus goes one way sidecar goes the other way and that's when the handlebars come off and that would have been this traffic island here it's turned more shape into a more sort of like ooh, rectangular sort of shape with curves at the outer corners rather than the more circular type it would have been back in the day so basically once I get here that's the roundabout there which we know it's in the b my book anyway the bus would have come round this side the sidecar then splits off as it uh, goes over our traffic island cone and rips the handlebars off and would have went down the side street but then they would have carried on filming down Bullhead Road with the runaway sidecar 
Now we're heading into Hillside Avenue to this new location that was newly found. Thanks to Mark Goonies again for this, so well, that's good. There's a cool breeze hitting me now, which is a blessed relief. Now if you look over the way there, we're not quite there yet. Ah, you'll see some canteen, it's like a canteen there. Well, it's once we turn this corner and we go down a little dip, on one side I'll show you across the road to a school which is the Yavdev College, uh, which is a, a um, college that was the, I think the, the school that used to be there was, uh, oh, was it Hartsmere High School? Until, I'm not too sure when it morphed into Yavdev College. Uh, they built new buildings along in the front of it. But thankfully, the old buildings that you see the bus passing, very briefly, in the scene, are still, in the, are still there behind it. They've just built a new frontage to it. So the thing that gave this away as a location was knowing where the... Um, where the um, where the old the old building was still standing there in the background, which is a big clue, and it matches up identically. Uh, that is the scene when the again the, you get a side-on shot of Jack, and he's got a scarf on, and he's watching, looking out the back of the step of the bus, and you see the what was I think it was somebody will have to correct me on this. Maybe Rob Hickey if he watches Hartsmere High School, which isn't there anymore. It's now Yavdev College. Now, that is across the road here, from the road that I'm walking down. Another thing that's happened in the years since they filmed here, you could freely look right onto the school and the, uh, which was Hartsmere, now Yavdev. But now, unfortunately, there's a whole load of trees that are growing up there now, so it's very hard to get the same perspective. But that would have been, you see the f school flashing past in the background, would have been this college here. Now, the scene that we're thinking of is, if you remember, back to Mutiny on the Buses, and Olive is on her way to the, um, to the depot to check up on Arthur because she thinks she's with Nymphy Nora instead of doing his fire drill, which she actually is doing the fire drill. And she rides the motorbike herself. Uh, and there's a bit where the motorbike turns around this tight corner. We're coming up to that tight corner now. And in the background you see a distinctive side-on house. I'm not quite there yet, so you won't really get what I'm talking about just now. But the giveaway to this location is, once I get down here, now it doesn't help as well because that would have been the house that you actually see in the background of it that we're talking of. But hopefully I'll try and get an angle that I can, that best points out this is the location because it definitely is. You do have this, and the trees have totally blotted out, you do have this angle of road with a steep incline, decline, sorry. Uh, now, I'll try crossing the road here because I might be able to give you a better perspective of it. This is the road that the bike would have come down from, and the houses that you see over the tops of the hedges would have been the ones that you see the motorbike passing in the background. They're very distinctive, they're actually side-on you see them. And this is the third in the line of the side-on ones, so we would have been looking for the first of the side-on ones. So you've got a house here, which you wouldn't have seen in the filming. You've got another house just behind all this thick hedge in here which is a bit of a beast because it's going to take away any photos that I can really get later which is the second one is there and the third one is just over the top there you'll see now the motorbike you, you would have got a view
the motorbike you would have seen uh, coming down a steep inclined hill here. So this is like the scene from Mutiny on the Buses. It's not in my book. Mark Goonies helped find this location. Uh, so thanks a lot to you, Mark. It was a great help. So that was really good finding this one because it's really difficult now with all the change in the trees, but the topography of the road is perfect. The house that you've got that you can't really see now, you can only really see it from Google Street View sort of software, gives it away as this being that location, which it definitely was. There's no two ways about that, but um, I'll log off for now. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video chat. And you can post up your comments and all that about on it because it's. I'm now going to try and see if I can get some good like for like photographs from that location to use in my book, okay? So thanks very much.